Okay, so the subject of this video is gas exchange in amphibia. Amphibia, intrinsically interesting. Um, so amphibia, the key thing that you know about amphibia, or you should know, is that their life cycle goes like this, little soft egg with a little black bob in the middle. We call that spawn. Which changes into a tadpole, sorry, rubbish drawing, which changes into an adult frog. Sorry, this is my frog. Um, I can only apologise. It's the only way I know how to draw them. So, these tadpoles are aquatic. So, amphibia, amphi means both. It's a Greek word meaning both. Amphitheater, two theatres clagged together to make a circle. Um, amphibia live on both land and in water, and they are dependent on water. So, this spawn is laid in water, so they do their mating in water, they lay their eggs in water, their eggs hatch out into tadpoles, which are aquatic, and then the adults are both aquatic and terrestrial. So a frog or toad, newt, quite happy uh, living anywhere terrestrial as long as it's damp. They do prefer damp areas and we'll see why in a minute. So let's deal with tadpoles first. So gas exchange in tadpoles and of course we've got a lovely example of a really big tadpole in uh, B2 and that's an axolotl. It's just a big tadpole of a salamander. It's never going to change into an adult. So tadpole, with its tail, obviously they're attached, its head, only a couple of eyes. And the key thing it's got for gas exchange is that it's got, I can only apologise for this drawing, it's got gills. They're not sticking out of its head like antennae, they stick out behind its head, but I can't draw and I've never claimed to be able to. So, adaptations. It's got gills with a good capillary <coughs> supply in close contact with water. feathery or branched. So we've got a large surface area. I'm just going to abbreviate surface area to SA. Obviously in an exam you need to write out surface area brackets SA then you can use it. And it's got a short diffusion path. In addition and don't try this at home, if you chopped up a tadpole you'd find, because it's got capillaries, it's also got haemoglobin, which we remember has a high affinity for oxygen. So if there's oxygen in the water, it will take it out. Now it doesn't have any other specialisation, so through its gills the blood's just flowing, it's in close contact with the water, and as the tadpole swims around into fresh, more oxygenated water, it sort of maintains its diffusion gradient that way, uh, just by movements of water and tadpole. They might sort of waft around a bit, which would help the circulation. So, <clears throat> our adult frog, um, I can only apologise again. This is my frog. It's got little fat legs, this one. Um, does two things. So, 
it has simple lungs, but it does so at rest when it's not using masses of oxygen. It does gas exchange over its skin, and that's why frogs kind of feel a bit slimy. Uh, it's because their 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 skin is uh, is quite delicate and thin, so they have thin, permeable. Skin and at rest, that's kind of enough to uh, allow them to have a lot of oxygen because they've got a capillary network. Near the skin with haemoglobin with its high affinity for oxygen. Um, and of course, you know, that's why they need to live somewhere damp, so that they don't lose too much water. Now, your active frog, on the other hand, or amphibian generally, uh, and there are some that are sort of wrinkly. Um, pretty sure I read about a wrinkly frog somewhere in the Andes. Anyway, when they're active, they need something else. So they, they're using their lungs... So, lungs are internal, and that cuts down water loss. They um, improve the surface area for gas exchange. So they're not quite as sophisticated as our lungs but they are going to increase that surface area. And they are also ventilated. And it's a pretty simple system. Uh, the frog uh, lowers the floor of its, uh, its mouth, which pulls air in. I've not given it any nostrils to pull air in through. So floor of its mouth moves down and the air, fresh air with oxygen, gets pulled in. So they lower the floor of the mouth. And that pulls oxygen in, and then when they raise the floor of the mouth, it sort of pushes the oxygen out. So their lungs are pretty simple. Uh, let's put that in ventilated by movements of the mouth floor. And you might see that called a buccal cavity. So, yep, that's amphibia for you. That's what I know.